Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 22nd lecture of the course. In this module, module 5, we are discussing about human conduct. In the previous lecture, we discussed model 1 of the human conduct, and now we are going to discuss model 2. So in this module, we are trying to understand the human conduct, all-encompassing resolution, and the holistic way of living. We started this discussion in the previous lecture, and now we continue with that lecture. Uh, we'll discuss about human conduct, and we'll look at the second model of human conduct. And let me say that we are going to discuss about this model only in brief. We'll talk about the details in uh, the next course, UHV4. Now, as you mentioned in the last session, that we can look at human conduct from different angles. Human conduct basically is the expression of the right understanding, right feeling, and right thought in our behavior, in our work, in our interaction with the whole of nature. So we can have different angles to look at it. So it was one angle that we described in the previous lecture. And now we can have another angle to look at the human conduct, the human participation. So we are looking into two formulations of human conduct, model one and model two. In model one, we have seen one description of the complete human conduct, isn't it? So the realization being at the base of coexistence. Now the activities of block B2 get self-organized. And with that, our behavior, work, and participation get self-organized. And we can see that it extends up to human tradition, isn't it? So this is one model of the human conduct. In model two, we'll try to investigate this uh, with some other kind of description of the human conduct. So in model two, human conduct is articulated in terms of three things. One is the human values. So it is named as 3.3.1. So we'll talk about human values in detail. Second is the policy. And the third is character. So this is another kind of formulation that we can have to describe the human conduct. Now, if you look at human values, essentially it means what to do as a human being and what not to do. So as we have described earlier also, that value is the participation in the larger order. So what is the participation of a human being in the larger, larger order? So what to do as a human being? That is something to be understood. And, and with that, a natural outcome is that we are able to decide what not to do as a human being, isn't it? Policy essentially means the detailing out, the thought, the analysis of how to do it. So once we are able to see what is my role in this entire existence, I can go to make out how to fulfill that role. <clears throat> So that will include my plan, program, implementation, results, evaluation. So all this has to take place in block B2. So with the contemplation of the values, we are able to image, we are able to analyze, we are able to compare, taste and select what, how to fulfill our participation, how to ensure value-based participation. So of course that will include the plans, the programs, the implementation strategies, the outcome that we get, the results, and then evaluation. And then again, working on it iteratively to improve our plans and programs and implementation strategies and so on. So when you go to study the policy, we have to look into the assets that we have. So there are three kinds of assets. One is the self, the second is the body, and the third is physical facility. So self means oneself, body. So when we say the self as an asset, so our imagination, our understanding is also an asset, isn't it? Then the body is an asset and the physical facility is an asset. So there could be one policy for enrichment. So that is something which can call as arthniti in Hindi. So enrichment of self, enrichment of body, enrichment of physical facility. The second policy would be for protection of self, body and physical facility. And the third would be for right utilization of self, body and physical facility. So what would enrichment mean? So to add to this, whatever exists right now. So that would mean uh, like if you talk about the self, how to develop right understanding in every self in the society, that would be policy for enrichment. How to ensure health uh, in every body in the society, how to ensure uh, enrichment of the physical facility, something to do with the enrichment here. Protection would mean that how to preserve the physical facility, how to preserve the health of the body, how to ensure definiteness of conduct. Policy of protection would mean that how to ensure that the 
understanding and living is ensured how the health of the body is ensured how it is conserved so once we are decided upon the values now we can work for the policy and policy essentially is detailing out of how to do so once we are able to contemplate on the participation at every level of living then we can draw plans programs implementation strategies we can look at the outcomes the results and then we can evaluate and then we can go on to improve further our plans programs implementation strategies now when you go to do this there could be three kinds of policies one is policy for enrichment the other is policy for protection and the third is policy for right utilization policy for enrichment can be called as arth niti in hindi policy for protection can be called as rajya niti in hindi and policy for right utilization can be called as dharm niti in hindi now where do we apply these policies so there are three kinds of assets one asset is the self the second asset is the body and the third asset is the physical facility the physiochemical things so how to enrich these assets how to protect these assets and how to rightly utilize these assets this is to be worked out and then character would mean uh, essentially the compassionate behavior work and participation in the larger order on the basis of human values so policy is something that we work out in our imagination in block b2 and then when you go to express this so when we express with the human being it is called as behavior when we express this with the rest of nature it is called as work and with that we are able to participate in the larger order extending up to the universal human order extending even up to the human tradition so we need to ensure compassionate behavior compassionate behavior mean that we are able to ensure justice that is mutual happiness uh, in our every interaction with the human being and that will also include that we are able to fill up the gaps created in ignorance so when we start our journey for right understanding we are not having the completeness of right understanding and we may be creating gaps in our relationships by hurting people by getting into opposition okay by spoiling the relationships so once we are into this process of ensuring compassionate behavior so we are able to ensure dialogue with even those people with whom we have created some gaps in the relationships and then we are able to share our understanding now and we are able to evaluate ourselves rightly and we are also able to evaluate what we have done in the past and then try to fill up the gaps this is also very important once you are into this process let's say in a family you are living and you might be hurting your family members earlier isn't it through your words through your interactions then can you sit with your family members and try to have a dialogue on all these issues where the people have felt hurt with you so that is like filling up the gaps this you can do with your friends this you can do with your colleagues at your workplace with other members in the society so how to ensure mutual happiness how to ensure justice so we'll see that on one end when we go to ensure contemplation understanding and realization the self on the other end we are able to ensure justice with more and more people uh, for uh, a longer duration i'll say even if the continuity is not there similarly in your work you are able to ensure preservation so preservation again would mean that we are able to enrich we are able to protect and we are able to right utilize the rest of nature and the damage that we have caused earlier due to ignorance due to lack of right understanding we are able to fill up the gaps also so presently you can see that we have polluted the water air soil isn't it there is so much of damage already done to the nature so while we are able to ensure compassionate work with the nature we are also able to fill up the gaps the damage that we have done earlier we are able to undo it we are able to compensate for it isn't it in that process this is one part compassionate behavior and work the second part is rightfully acquired wealth so when we go to acquire wealth and wealth essentially means the physical facility we are able to work out the right means to acquire wealth so that we are able to feel prosperous in the process by rightly identifying our need for physical facility rightly identifying the process for production and distribution of the physical facility and in that process we are also able to ensure justice with others so that is swadhan that is rightfully acquired wealth and the third is chastity in conjugal relationship so we are able to ensure the chastity in our conjugal relationship something that is called as swanari or swapurush in hindi 
I hope you are able to see this. So as the second model of human conduct, we talked about human values, policy, and character. This is the second formulation, the second way of looking at the human conduct. The outcome is going to be the same. Here also we are talking about mutual happiness, mutual prosperity, isn't it? They are also talking about the same. Now we are having a different angle of looking at things. Now we'll detail upon human values, we'll detail upon the policy and the character. Or talking about the human values, so value is essentially the participation that is role of human being in this existence. And we can identify the human values in these four dimensions. So one is the values in the self. And values in the self would mean that it is something to do with the participation of my own activities in my happiness, in my continuity of happiness. So what would be the values here? So there are four values. We'll discuss about them in detail. Happiness, peace, satisfaction, and bliss. We have talked about these words earlier also. And we'll again lift them out and then discuss about them. When you look at the participation in the universal human order, so there are six values that can be identified. Perseverance, brevity, generosity, kindness, beneficence, and compassion. Now we'll look into the meaning of all these words. So in the silk, there are four values. In the universal human order, there would be six values looking at our participation. If you look at the human-human relationship leading to justice, then there are nine established values and nine expressed values. So we have studied about the nine established values earlier. Now we also talk about the nine expressed values. So what are those uh, nine established values? So trust, respect, affection, these are all established values, the values that get stated in the self. And then they get naturally expressed in our relation, in our participation. So put them all together, there are 18 values in human-human relationship. And when you look at the interaction of human being with the rest of nature, there are two values, utility value and artistic value. So all these put together, there are 30 values. Now, if you look at the present state, you will see that we uh, we'll see that our attention is primarily focused upon this fourth one, the interaction of human being with the rest of nature. And maybe we are able to give some attention on this fourth class of values, on this fourth set of values out of all these 30 values. So, well, this is something to be made out for oneself that are we able to ensure all these values within us or we are only targeting at certain things to do with the physical facilities. So are we able to ensure these values in the self, happiness, peace, satisfaction, bliss? Are we able to ensure perseverance, bravery, generosity in our participation with the other human beings? And are we able to ensure these values uh, which are there in the relationship and so on? So try to find it out for yourself. Try to explore and investigate about yourself. Now, Looking at the human values, so the first one, if you see, that is to do with the harmony in the self on the basis of realization of coexistence. So when I'm able to realize the coexistence, on that basis, I'm able to understand the harmony in the nature. And on that basis, I'm able to see my participation, contemplate my participation uh, in the larger order. And with this, there are values stated in the self. So happiness, peace, satisfaction, bliss, these are all the values which are stated in the self. On the basis of participation in the universal human order or universal order, we can have these six values, perseverance, bravery, generosity, kindness, beneficence, and compassion. And then there are nine established values and nine expressed values in human-human relationship. And then there are two values in the human rest of nature relationship. So now we'll try to understand them one by one. So again, it is something to explore for oneself, whether we are able to ensure all these values within us or only we are able to focus on the physical facility part. Now referring to this diagram again, so we can see the four values here in the self, bliss, satisfaction, peace, and happiness. And now we'll try to understand them one by one. So the state of happiness is there when we are able to ensure harmony at the level of selecting and testing. That is, selecting is on the basis of goal and value guided sensation. And then there is 
and that is when selecting is there on the basis of goal and value guided sensation based testing so we saw that there are three kinds of testing goal based value based and sensation based so unless block b1 is activated unless the higher level activities are activated it is primarily sensation based but with the realization understanding and contemplation the sense the testing is goal and value guided and then we are able to see happiness within oneself and selecting and testing is guided by comparing and analyzing here so the lower level activities are guided by the higher level activities so the comparing and analyzing is now guiding selecting and testing and thus there is harmony between thought and expectation looking for the p should mean that there is harmony at the level of analyzing and comparing that is analyzing on the basis of coexistence harmony justice guided senses health profit best comparing so we have already discussed about the six bases of comparing and we saw that if the comparing is guided by realization of coexistence understanding of harmony and contemplation of participation leading to justice then the comparing is definite then the comparing is humane and this ensures peace in the self and when this happens it means that the analyzing and comparing is guided by contemplation and desire once again about peace similarly there is peace in the self when there is harmony at the level of analyzing and comparing that is analyzing on the basis of coexistence harmony justice guided senses health profit this comparing is there and this essentially means that all the six bases of comparing are activated in the self before block b1 is activated the comparing is taking place only on the basis of senses health and profit and thus it is incomplete but with the realization of coexistence with understanding of harmony and with the contemplation of participation uh, all the six bases are activated and then the comparing is complete so now the analyzing is there on the basis of all the six bases of comparing where uh, the upper three bases are guiding the lower three bases and then what would happen then the analyzing and comparing is guided by contemplation and imaging so again the higher level activities are guiding the lower level activities and here you will see that at the level of desire the contemplation is also included and thus there is definiteness in the desire satisfaction would mean that there is harmony at the level of desire and contemplation now talking about satisfaction satisfaction is there when there is harmony at the level of imaging and contemplation and that means that the desires are now guided by based on contemplation of the participation of the human being in the entire nature and now the desires are definite and it is clear that there is every provision in the nature for their fulfillment so earlier we might have so many desires which are misled by preconditionings or sensations but with the contemplation the definiteness is there in the imaging because it is always in terms of participation in the larger order participation in terms of harmony at the larger order and thus there is definiteness and also it will also one is able to see that there is every provision in the nature for fulfillment of such desires which are based on the understanding of harmony so the desire and contemplation now talking about satisfaction satisfaction would mean that there is harmony at the level of imaging and contemplation and what does it mean <clears throat> and what does it mean now the desires are based on that is guided by contemplation of the participation of the human being in the entire nature so once i am able to contemplate on the participation once i am able to see my role clearly in the universal human order then my complete imaging is guided by that seeing of participation in the order in the relationship there is no more enslavement of any kind of preconditioning and thus there is definiteness in the desires also with this clarity i am able to see that there is every provision in the nature for their fulfillment and then what will happen the imaging and contemplation are guided by understanding and determination so again the higher level activities will be guiding the lower level activities and thus you can see that there is a harmony here there is a natural harm there is a natural state here once again and thus we are able to see that there is harmony here among the activities of the self and finally there is bliss in the self when there is harmony at the level of determination and understanding understanding means that there is clarity about the harmony in nature and determination means that all my effort will now be for mutual enrichment 
So this will happen when there is realization of the coexistence. So the understanding and determination is guided by realization and authentication now. And what is realization? It is to have the clarity about the coexistence. I'm able to see the coexistence as it is. I'm able to see the submergence of nature in space. And then authentication is there in the self. And what does that mean? That all my effort will now be for authenticating the coexistence that is a submergence of nature in space. So with the realization accomplished, it gets authenticated in the self by definiteness of all these activities and by ever flowing harmony in the self. And thus there is bliss in the self, there is satisfaction in the self, there is peace in the self, and there is happiness in the self. And this is continuity of happiness. So put this all together, what we are able to see that there is continuity of happiness in the self. And there is continuity only when the realization has taken place and the authentication is there in the self. So these are the four values in the self. We talked about the four values. We talked about these values earlier also. And now I think you have better clarity of these four words. So looking at the four values, happiness means that there is harmony at the level of selecting and testing. That is selecting is on the basis of goal and value guided sensation based testing. And thus the selecting and testing is guided by comparing and analyzing. So again, you can see that the higher level activity is guiding the lower level activity. <clears throat> Peace is there when there's harmony at the level of analyzing and comparing. And all these six bases of comparing are now activated. So coexistence, harmony, and justice are guiding the sensation, health, and profit-based comparing. And here again, we can see that the thought is guided by desire. And the, the analyzing and comparing is guided by contemplation and desire. So discussing the values once again, there is happiness in the self when there is harmony at the level of selecting and testing. And the selecting is on the basis of goal and value guided sensation based testing. So we can see that the higher level activities are now guiding the lower level activities as the comparing and analyzing, which is now self-organized is guiding the selecting and testing. There is peace in the self and there is harmony at the level of analyzing and comparing. And that means that all the six bases of comparing are activated. So the coexistence, harmony, and justice are now guiding the lower level basis of the comparing, that is the sensation, health, and profit. And here again, we can see that the analyzing and comparing is guided by contemplation and imaging. So the higher level activities are again guiding the lower level activities. Now the point is to observe them in the self. So as you go on, studying this as you start exploring within as you start contemplating on the values are you able to see this kind of shift so this is something to be asked are you able to see that now you are happier you are more peaceful as you go on studying this course as you go on exploring within as you go on understanding the activities of the self so this is something that you can question for yourself Clearly, uh, satisfaction is there when there is harmony at the level of imaging and contemplation. That is, desires are now based on contemplation of the participation. And thus, the desires are definite. And one is able to see that there is every provision in the nature for their fulfillment. So let me take an example. So trust is one value. When I'm able to ensure the feeling of trust in me, I'm able to see that, yes, every human being innately wants to make me happy. And I also innately wants to, and I also innately want to make the other happy. Now with this assurance, every time I get the desire to participate with other human being in terms of ensuring happiness and not otherwise. And I'm also able to see that since the other also wants to make me happy, I also want to make the other happy. So there's provision in the nature already for the fulfillment of my desire. And this helps me ensure satisfaction within me. And this ensures satisfaction within me. Similarly, I'm able to see that the needs of the body are already limited in quantity. So it's not that they are unlimited and I have to keep on accumulating. I'm able to see that they are limited. I can also see that my body is capable of producing more than what I require in terms of physical facilities. So there's already a provision in the nature for ensuring prosperity in me. So I also feel satisfied in terms of the fulfillment of the need for physical facilities, isn't it? Similarly, when I'm able to understand the harmony, 
uh, of all the orders in the nature. So this clarity about the harmony and the determination that follows for mutual fulfillment, this ensures bliss in me. And this is there when I am able to realize the existence and this gets authenticated in all my efforts. So the understanding and determination is now guided by realization and authentication. And there's clarity about the existence that is submergence of nature and space. And authentication essentially means that all my effort will now be for authenticating this coexistence. So, so within me, my every desire, my every thought, my every expectation is in terms of authenticating this realization of coexistence. In my behavior, work and participation also, my every effort is in terms of authenticating this realization of coexistence. And this ensures the state of bliss in me. Now, looking at the participation, now looking at the participation in the universal order as a human being, if you look at the natural characteristic of human being with the human consciousness, so there are three values here, perseverance, bravery, and generosity. So perseverance essentially means that I feel committed for living in harmony at all four levels with my patients, with patients. So there is a natural commitment in me when I'm able to see that there is already harmony at every level in my living. Once again, when I'm naturally able to see that there is harmony in the nature, I'm able to see my participation in harmony also. So I naturally feel committed to live in harmony. So I persevere every time whenever there is some situation or circumstance where I am able to see some problem my participation, my role always is in terms of ensuring harmony and not creating disharmony. So the commitment is there and this is very much visible in my conduct. So this is perseverance. Bravity means that I have the commitment for helping the other to understand harmony and live in harmony at all these four levels. So when I feel committed within me, I am also ready to help the other understand harmony and live in harmony. And along with that, there is generosity in me so I'm able to invest my self, body and physical facility to ensure the understanding and living in harmony for the other also at all the four levels. So when I am able to have the awakening to the higher level activities, this will naturally follow. This is again something that you can try to mark for yourself, whether you are able to see perseverance in you or not. Earlier, whenever some situation was there and it was not as per your expectation, or it was some unfavorable situation. The way used, the way used to get irritated or upset, okay, or impatient. Are you able to see some kind of shift there? Similarly, the way you got opposed to the other earlier, when the other was not behaving properly. Now, are you still feeling opposed the same way? Or now you are able to see how you can help the other understand harmony. Similarly, you see that there may be a shift in terms of generosity. With the clarity that you are getting, you might be ready even better in a better way. You might be ready in a better way to invest oneself, to invest yourself, your body, your physical facility for ensuring the understanding of harmony in the other. So this is something that we are discussing in terms of human conduct, the second model of human conduct. And these are the values. So we'll see that the more I'm able to work for my right understanding and right feeling, these things become more evident in my own thought, in my own behavior, in my work. So try to make it out. So try to make it out, whether you are able to see this kind of shift in yourself. Are you able to persevere more? Do you feel committed? in a better way to ensure harmony with the other. And do you also feel generous now in terms of investing yourself or your physical facilities to help the other understand and live in harmony? Try to make it out. Now, there are six more values to be studied here. So natural characteristic of the human being with human consciousness, and that is there in terms of participation in the universal order as a human being. So there are three values here, and we'll discuss three more values on the next slide. Kindness, 
beneficence and okay no no, no. one second that was yes Now, looking at the participation in the universal order, again, we can see that there are three more values that we are able to see within oneself. One is the kindness, then beneficence, and then compassion. So what does kindness mean? We have been, uh, we, have, my, we might have been used to use these words, uh, but we might get a different meaning here. So kindness means providing means to one who has the ability, but not the means. I'll explain this. Beneficence means helping the other to develop the competence to utilize the means they already have. And compassion means helping the other unconditionally to develop the competence as well as the means to fulfill his needs when he neither has the ability nor the means. So for example, one is ready to understand. Okay, one is ready to ensure the right understanding and right feeling within oneself, but one has not got the proposal. One has not got the opportunity to get educated. So you provide the proposal, you provide the education so that the person who is already eager to understand, ready to understand, is able to fulfill his or her desire. This is kindness. It may be the case that the proposal is already there in front of the other, or the content of education is already there in front of the other. But the other is not feeling eager to understand, is not feeling ready to understand. So you develop the competence so that already the means which is available in terms of proposal or content or, or content for right understanding is utilized by the other to develop the competence. No, is utilized by the other to ensure right understanding and right feeling. So that is beneficence. And compassion means that the other neither has the right proposal, that is the content of education, nor have the willingness to understand. And you develop the both. So you develop the competence as well as the means so that the needs of the other are fulfilled, okay? Irrespective of the fact whether the other has the means or not. So this is compassion. Now with the feeling of compassion, I become responsible to all. So if you look at education, education is the expression of compassion. So whosoever is entering the process of education, we are trying to develop the readiness to understand as well as providing the proposal to the other, providing the content to the other. Now in terms of ensuring an undivided society, these values have a huge role to play because we are able to see that there are so many people who do not have that sanskar, that readiness to understand. And the content also might not have reached to the masses. So we when you try to take the right content to the masses and also try to develop the readiness to understand, it is an act of compassion. So we can see that this is the participation of a human being in the universal order. So again, try to make out for yourself whether you are able to see a shift in yourself, in your imagination in terms of these values, where we can see that there is more kind, where you are able to see that there is more kindness in you, more beneficence in you, more compassion in you as you go along understanding the content. Now, looking at the participation in the human-human relationship as a human being, so these are nine values. You already have studied these values in UHP 2. Trust, respect, affection, care, guidance. So these are the nine values in human-human relationship, which you have already studied in UHP 2. And we'll briefly recap it. So trust is the foundation value in every relationship. Then it is followed by respect, affection, care, guidance, reverence, glory, gratitude, and finally love, which is the complete value. Now, trust is to be assured that the other intends to make me happy and prosperous. This assurance is basically the foundation of every relationship. If I feel that the other wants to make me unhappy, I feel opposed to the other. But when I'm able to see very clearly that the other wants to make me happy, then I feel related to the other. So the relationship starts with the feeling of trust. And that's why it is called as foundation value. Now with this trust, I'm able to rightly evaluate the other. 
with the basis that the other is like me and we are complementary to each other. So we are now able to evaluate each other rightly with a feeling of respect and we are able to see the complementarity. Affection is the acceptance of the other as one's relative. So once I have the feeling of trust and respect, then only I'm able to accept the other with the level of competence that one has. And then I try to complement the then I try to complement the other in terms of developing the competence with the feeling of commitment. Care means being responsible and committed for nurturing and protecting the body of one's relative. So once I have the feeling of affection, I feel naturally responsible and committed to take care of the body of the other. And this is the feeling of care. Guidance is when I'm able to see my responsibility and commitment for ensuring the right understanding and right feeling in the self of my relative. And once I have the affection, then it is followed by care and guidance. Care is to be responsible to the body. Guidance is to be responsible to the self. Now, these three values, if you see reverence, glory, and gratitude. So these are based on the understanding of excellence. So when I'm able to see the excellence in the other, I'm able to accept the excellence. This acceptance of excellence is something that is called as reverence. Glory is that I'm able to see the effort that one has made for excellence whether the other has achieved excellence in completeness or not, but I'm able to see the effort made by the other and I'm able to accept the other. Gratitude is there when I'm able to accept the effort made for developing my competence by the other. So there may be so many people in the family, outside the family, who have helped me ensure excellence in me or at least work for excellence in me. Now, when I'm able to accept their effort, it gives me a feeling of gratitude. Now, with all these values, I'm now able to feel related to all. So all these values are there in my contemplation. I'm able to contemplate upon these values. And with that, I feel related to all, to each and every human being. And that may extend to other entities in the nature also. So this natural state of feeling related to the to every human being. Again, with the inputs that you got in the previous course and the recap that we made right now, try to find out whether you are able to see shift in yourself about all this. Are you able to see that the other intends to make you happy? Is there some shift in there? Is there some shift in you there? Are you able to see the intention of the other clearly now? Are you able to rightly evaluate the other without any differentiation? Are you able to accept the other? So try to see the shift in terms of these values in you. So that is something that has to be evaluated by you. You already have studied about these values in the previous course and now try to evaluate yourself in terms of the progress made in living up to these values. Now, with all these established values, there are some expressed values. So the, ex so the expressed values are the expression of the established values. So these values get stated in me, established in me. And in my conduct, some values get expressed, which are called as expressed values. With trust comes complementariness. And then that means that we are able to work together. So when I'm so when I'm having the trust on intention of the other, so I'm able to work with the other without feeling opposed. Isn't it? With the feeling of respect, there is compliance or transparency in me. And that means that I am able to see that the other is like me. I am complementary to the other. And I am also able to rightly evaluate each other. And that will be exhibited in terms of my transparency in my conduct without hiding anything from the other, without beguiling the other. I am able to rightly evaluate myself as well as the other and share with the other. The natural outcome of affection is commitment that is expressed in my relationship. So I feel self-motivated for fulfilling the responsibility in relationship in me. So you'll see that in family, this commitment is very much required. Unless we are able to accept the other with a given level of competence, the family doesn't continue. So to have the, to sustain the family, this is very much required, this commitment between husband and wife, between parents and children, between brothers and sisters, okay, between friends. 
and this will be there in continuity only when there is trust and respect. Similarly, with care comes generosity, and then it means that we are able to offer our self, body, and wealth as required. With guidance comes spontaneity, and that means that we are able to provide right education, sanskar, and at least protect the other from doing something wrong. So guidance means that we are able to help the other develop the right understanding, right feeling, and also help the other avoid something that would not ensure the right understanding, that would take one on the right on the wrong path, that would take oneself on the wrong path. So we are able to protect the other from doing something wrong. Similarly, going ahead, looking at the expressed values of reverence. So obedience reverence is expressed in terms of obedience. So there's a willingness to receive the inspiration. The feeling of reverence is expressed in terms of obedience and the willingness to receive the inspiration about what is right from the other. And then when I have the feeling of reverence from, <clears throat> and then when I have the feeling of reverence for somebody, I try to be like the other. Isn't it? With the feeling of glory comes simplicity. So there's absence of ego here. So I'm able to see that it's not only me who is making effort for right understanding, right feeling. There have been so many people who have invested themselves, their self, body, and wealth so that they are able to ensure the right understanding within oneself. And this ensures absence of ego in me. With gratitude comes self-restraint. And that means that I'm able to behave with courtesy. So when I'm able to accept the effort made by the other for my development, then I naturally feel restrained in my behavior. I feel courteous in my behavior to the other. And with love comes unanimity. And unanimity means that I'm able to see every human being related to me. So that is essentially to live with the feeling of coexistence, relationship with every human being, with every unit rather in the existence. So it starts with human being and extends up to every unit in the nature. Okay. So I'm able to see my relationship very naturally with every entity in the nature. That is the expressed value of love. So there are nine established values and nine expressed values. This is all that we discussed in these two slides. So there are 18 values in human-human relationship. Now, looking at the participation in human rest of nature relationship, there are two values. One is the utility value and the other is the artistic value. Now, what is utility? So utility of a physical facility in these three purposes, what would be that? So in nurturing the body, protecting the body, and in enhancing the capacity of body for use in societal development. That is right utilization. So there is some utility value of food. It nurtures the body. Of clothes and shelter, it protects the body. And if you look at the instrument that we are using at this moment, so these are enhancing the capacity of the body in terms of ensuring harmony in the society. For example, I am participating in education through these means. So that is the utility value of these means, isn't it? Artistic value means that it facilitates the enrichment, protection, and right utilization. So the food is there, right? But the food can be produced in an artistic way so that it provides health in a better way. The cloth is there, but it can be, but it can be produced in such a way that it fulfills the need for protection. The cloth is there, but it can be produced in such a way that it fulfills the need for protection in a better way. Let's say you are using a shirt, then the buttons in the shirt can be put in the front so that you are able to put on and put off in a better way. Isn't it? You put on shoes, then the laces can be placed in such a way that removing the shoe and putting on the shoe is convenient. So this is something where we are adding the artistic value to the product. So it is in terms of protecting the physical facility and in terms of making it people friendly, that is facilitating the behavior, making it convenient for sharing, expressing or receiving knowledge, feeling and thought. And the third would be ease in use. So something that I gave example for, it is to provide ease in use. So facilitating work, making it convenient for uses. Now there could be various ways of protecting the physical facility. So there's a house and now you paint the house so that the life of the house is enhanced. So what you are doing here, you are protecting the house. Now, if you look at the slides in front of you, a proper color has been assigned. 
the font size has been chosen the slide has been organized in a particular manner so that is essentially meant to express the content that is being shared here in a better way so that you are able to comprehend better the way we are annotating on the slide this is an artistic value the content is the same but by annotation we hope that the content is expressed in a better way to you so this is about the artistic value and from your own interaction with the rest of nature you can pick out how you utilize the commodity you utilize the physical facility and how you add the artistic value to the commodity to the facility so try to look at your own room and try to see what is the utility value of any commodity in your room and what is the artistic value of the same commodity the way the door has been designed the way the window has been designed the way the uh, utensils in the kitchen have been de designed so if you look at the utensils also okay if you look at the design of a glass it has been made in such a way that you can hold it conveniently you can use it for taking water conveniently you can wash it conveniently so the need for water can be fulfilled in multiple ways but when you design a glass you add the artistic value to it so that it is there uh, so so that you are able to use it easily then it so that you are able to protect the facility you also you know varnish you also paint the doors you paint the walls you paint the window so that the life is increased so all these things you can observe in terms of utility of the physical facility so take it as an assignment so you have to look at all the facilities in your room and try to make out their utility value and their artistic value there could be certain things also which do not have any value isn't it so there may be something which spoils the health there may be something which spoils the behavior so this that is not going to have any value and then you have to see that if something is valuable how you can add value to it how can enhance the value protect the value isn't it this comes the policy so policy is detailing of so next comes policy so policy is the detailing of that is thought of how to do and that goes up to human constitution so that will include the plan program implementation strategy results evaluation all these things and there are three policies policy for enrichment policy for protection and policy for right utilization and there are three resources here self body and physical facility so what are the policy for right utilization which is the first priority so if you look at these three policies you can see that the right utilization comes first this is one and this comes second and this comes third so already we have so many resources for which we do not need to even protect or enrich it's only that we need to right utilize so if you look at the self so the policy for right utilization of the self would mean that there is policy for investing the self for self study practice and authenticating living so to invest oneself for developing the right understanding and authenticating in living so right utilization of the body would mean that this policy right utilization of the body would mean that this policy to ensure that the body is used for ensuring the right understanding and right feeling the self as well as its authentication in the living including the behavior work and participation in the larger order so that is essentially so that essentially means to utilize the body as an instrument of the self in terms of authenticating one's understanding in living and if you look at the physical facility so the policy to ensure the use of physical facility for nurturing protection and right utilization of the body and that is the policy for right utilization of physical facility for relationship and societal order so we have talked about right utilization earlier also for the physical facility so now it is to be utilized in terms of authenticating one's understanding in living so one is able to participate in the relationship in terms of undivided society universal human order going up to human tradition so that is the utilization of physical facility in the right manner the second priority is policy for protection so protection of the self body and physical facility 
so policy for protection of the self would mean that is policy for ensuring conducive environment and protecting from unfavorable environment so how to ensure conducive environment and essentially in your relationship let's say you have to develop the right understanding in the child so you try to ensure the conducive environment and also protect from unenvironment and you also try to protect the child from unfavorable environment so that the environment is conducive for right understanding similarly for the body you need to have a policy for ensuring shelter clothes isn't it and for physical facility we need to have the policy for proper storage so let's say we are producing the food grains and we need to protect the food grains so that they are utilized when the grains are not being produced and they are also preserved they are also not wasted away and the third is the policy for enrichment so for self it is the policy for education sanskar adult education other efforts for development of sanskar in the society like music dance drama so there could be so many multi there should <coughs> show so there could be so many ways of developing the right understanding in the self so the formal education is one part then we can go for informal education and we can also promote such activities like music dance drama so that the society gets educated as a whole and we can see that today also there are so many ways of communication that we are trying to utilize so that we are able to develop the right feeling in the other we are able to develop right understanding in the other <coughs> for the body the policy would mean that there is policy for intake lifestyle etc to ensure the health of the body so the policy to nurture the body isn't it that is going to come here and then for physical facility we need to have a policy for production with right process and right skills so we do need to have production in the society you can see that there is a definite dimension of production and work so you have to have a policy for ensuring proper production so that the need of every family is fulfilled in terms of physical facilities so these are the three policies which are getting expressed as human conduct now talking about character character is compassionate behavior work and participation in the larger order on the basis of human values so character is the compassionate behavior work and participation in the larger order on the basis of human values so when we look at behavior so behavior is in terms of ensuring justice that is mutual happiness and in that process we are also able to fill the gaps created in ignorance so something that i said earlier it might be the case that we have hurt the other or we have spoiled the relationship in the past so now with compassionate behavior we are able to fill those gaps isn't it by getting into dialogue with the other similarly it may be the case that we have created gaps in our ignorance in terms of physical facilities so now our work is such that we are able to ensure the preservation and mutual prosperity and also fill the gaps created earlier so this is about compassionate behavior and work now we are also able to fulfill the needs of the body in such a way that we feel prosperous and at the same time we are able to ensure justice with the human being and we are able to ensure fulfillment with the rest of nature also and that is called as rightfully acquired wealth other and in hindi it is called as and in hindi it is called as swadhan other uh, otherwise it is the wealth acquired by wrong means so if you look at the flip side of it if one is not able to acquire the wealth rightly so one may be using corrupt practices mal practices for fulfilling the needs of the body and the third one is the chastity in conjugal relationship so in hindi it is called as sonari or swapurush so we are able to ensure this chastity in the conjugal relationship now if you look at the rightfully acquired wealth there could be three modes of rightfully acquired wealth so one is production through labor on the rest of nature or physical facility and that is obtained in exchange of service so physical facility endowed with utility value and artistic value so uh, once again <clears throat> so if you look at the rightfully acquired wealth so there could be three modes one is the production through labor on rest of nature or physical facility obtained in exchange of service so we are having the physical facility which is endowed with utility value and artistic value so this is one mode 
So for example, you work in a factory and you produce physical facility, right? So that is your rightfully acquired wealth. Or you exchange physical facility with the other by proper mode of exchange. So that is also your own wealth. The second mode could be gift. So the wealth shared willingly or happily from one's rightfully acquired wealth on various occasions like festivals. And we can see that we keep on sharing gifts on certain occasions, say, let's say there is a birth of a child in the family. So we naturally go and share some gift. There's a marriage in the family. We share gifts, isn't it? So that is also your rightfully acquired wealth. And the third is the award. So the physical facility or wealth given with joy in a function to recognize one's contribution to society and for motivating others. So it may be the case that you did something magnificent for the society, something very util, something very useful for the. <clears throat> so you did something very useful for the. So you did something very useful for the society, and then the society honors you by providing you some gift. And the society honors you by providing some award. So maybe if you do some very good natural farming. So let's say you are a very good natural farmer. So the society may gift you a piece of land, isn't it? You are a very good carpenter. So for the society can gift you some machine for doing the carpentry work better. So this way also through award, we are able to have the rightfully acquired wealth. So these are the three modes. One is the production. The second is the gift and third is the award. So now put them all together. So human conduct by model two means three things human values, policy, and character. Now, human values are something which are there in block B1 at the level of realization and understanding which gets contemplated in the self. Policy is at the level of thought and thought essentially means imagination. And character is there as expression at the level of behavior, work, and participation in the larger order. Now, if you look at the value part, it is something definite. Now put them all together, we can understand the human conduct in this model in this way. So there are three components of it, human values, policy, and character. So human values is understanding of what to do as a human being. And is something to be ensured at the level of block B1, at the level of realization, understanding, and contemplation. So this is something to do with block B1. Policy is detailing of how to do. So that is going to be ensured in block B2 in the dimension of thought that is the imagination and character is there which is expressed in terms of behavior work and participation so block b3 and b4 that we mentioned earlier now if you look at human values they are definite they are intact invariant universal so for example if i have to make a choice for food so i can definitely see that the value of food is in terms of nurturing the body if I have to use a language, I can definitely see that it is in terms of ensuring respect in mutual relationship. So there are 30 values that we discussed today. And you can see that they're all universal, invariant with time. And there's something innate to each one of us. So there is definiteness here. But if you look at the policy and character, you can see that there is scope for creativity here. And that's how we can, and that's how we can employ our imagination for more and more creative ways of fulfilling this. So if you look at the local conditions, customs, language, they will determine what kind of policy has to be made. So for example, if one has to select food and one is living in the coastal regions, then we'll, one will select one kind of food. If one is living in the plateau region, the food choice may be different. If one is living in the mountains, the food choice will be different. Now in all these regions, the purpose would be to nurture the body. But there could be creativity in terms of selecting in food, produ producing the food, preserving the food. So the, so the need for nurturing the body can be fulfilled either by wheat or rice or maize or something else, isn't it? There could be a lot of variety here. Similarly, I have the feeling of respect in me and I can express it by touching feet, shaking hands, isn't it? So many ways, embracing the other. So there's a lot of creativity here. So there's a lot of scope for creativity here. There's no creativity here. It is something definite, but there's a lot of creativity here. And in education, we have to ensure both the definite part as well as the part which is having scope for creativity. So when we learn a language, when we learn some skills, 
so there could be a lot of scope for creativity and that is something that we can see the devices that we're using today were not to be seen 40 years back so some creativity has been there and you can see how we are able to interact today as compared to the days when we are not having such gadgets in our hands but if you look at the state 40 years back still the naturally acceptable feeling was respect when today the naturally acceptable feeling is respect now earlier we might be expressing our feeling of respect just by communicating with each other in person but now we can fulfill the feeling of respect through mobile phones through emails and so many ways so there's creativity here in terms of making the policy and in terms of fulfilling the need for character so we can have creativity here in fulfilling the policy and the character part and there is going to be definitely see in fulfilling the value part so to reiterate what we discussed today we talked about human values we talked about policy and we talked about character i will not read over i will not read the details once again this is something that we discussed earlier so, the, so to sum up the whole thing we talked about knowledge of human conduct today we talked about second model in which we are able to understand the conduct in terms of values policy and character i am not going to read all this once again this is something that we started discussing in the beginning of the lecture and this is a sum up of all that we discussed today so we could see that there are two models model 1 is something that we discussed in lecture 21 isn't it so we uh, studied the diagram of the self so we studied about the activities of the self and we tried to see the conduct as a natural outcome of the right understanding right feeling in the self and this is another model we'll try to look at the conduct in terms of values policy and character now we have a homework for you so are you able to distinguish between <clears throat> so are you able to distinguish these four states in yourself happiness peace satisfaction and bliss how are these words different are you able to see these values in the self observe yourself and identify the places where you can have more perseverance bravery and generosity for others so try to see whether there has been some shift in terms of perseverance bravery and generosity in you and try to identify such occasions where you can have more perseverance bravery and generosity then detail out how human character will show up in your case isn't it in terms of compassionate behavior work and participation in terms of rightfully acquired wealth in terms of chastity in conjugal relationship also evaluate your present state as compared to the desired state so to what extent we are able to live with human conduct is something to be evaluated for oneself so on one hand we have to understand what human conduct means and at the same time you have to evaluate oneself once living in terms of this understanding of human conduct so work out some detail in the form of the three policies in present day society so let's say you have to make a policy for enrichment or protection right utilization so can you draw out some policy can you draw out some plan program implementation strategy to fulfill this in the society today so try to make it out so today in this lecture we tried to understand human conduct and we studied the second model of human conduct in the previous lecture we studied about model 1 Good. Uh, today we studied model 2 and we tried to understand the human conduct in terms of values policy and character and we established all the values we studied about four values in the self then six values in the participation in the larger order 18 values in human human relationship and two values in human rest of nature relationship we studied three policies policy for enrichment policy for protection and policy for right utilization and then we studied about character so we saw that character is basically the compassionate behavior work and participation in the larger order that includes even the rightfully acquired wealth and chastity in conjugal relationship so very nice try to observe these things in yourself and this is all for today's lecture thank you